everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. In this episode, we're back making picture frames. We've had so many requests from people about making a video using a sliding miter that we decided to see what we could do to set something up that could make picture frames using that tool. Anybody who's made picture frames, or at least tried to make picture frames, will probably understand that it's not always as easy as it looks. You know, you look at a simple picture frame and there's four corners, it takes four pieces of wood, you just cut each one at a 45 degree angle, but when you go to put them all together, it's very common that they don't line up properly and so you have to go back and make recuts. Well, today we're going to show you why those recuts don't work and how you can set your saw up so that when you do cut them, they're going to be right the first time. The real secret to making picture frames is this. The two opposing sides need to be exactly the same length. So this side and this side need to be exactly the same length and this side and this side also need to be exactly the same length. It doesn't matter what length they are as long as this side and this side are equal and this side and this side. And here's what I mean by that. Now it's really easy to make cut the, the four sides and the first three sides go together really well. You've got perfect joints, perfect joints, perfect joints, but when you get to the last one that's where all the joints compound and if you're off by a degree now that compounds four times, so now you're off at least four degrees. So in a lot of cases, you'll end up with a gap that looks like this. This is a big gap. So what a lot of people will try and do is take one or the other of these, take it back to the saw, and they will cut like this. They'll make a cut across here. They'll, they'll realize that this is this angle, so they'll make a cut like this. But look at exactly what's happening when they do that. So here's what a lot of people do. They cut through to correct the angle so that it will fit, or they think it will fit, with the existing, the other, the other uh, side of this frame, but in fact, when they make that cut, you can actually see they've actually cut the frame and made the frame slightly shorter. So this frame can never go together properly because it's not cut right. It's cut, this arm is cut too short. So here's what you're going to need for this project. Of course you're going to need your sliding miter saw and the better quality on that, the easier it's going to be for you to work with. You're going to need a couple of clamps uh, maybe more than a couple, but at least a couple of clamps, and we'll talk about those later on as we go along. You, you may need different clamps. You're also going to need what I'm calling a, a backer board. Now, this is very important because this is going to be the new fence that you're going to be clamping to your sliding miter saw. And this board needs to be absolutely flat and true and straight. And it will the length the width of it is going to depend on your saw, and we'll talk about that too once we get this installed. But it's important. It doesn't matter if this is plywood or an MDF or a man-made material or a natural wood, as long as it is straight and flat, and probably you'll want about three quarters of an inch thick. The length of it again is not that critical because that's going to depend on how long your frames or the, the longest frame is that you're going to make. Um, this one here is uh, about uh, three and a half feet. And the last thing, and the most, one of the most important things that you're going to need is a very good quality blade on your chop saw. Uh, and if you're using the blade that came with your chop saw, you're probably going to need to go out and get a, a good this is an 80 tooth Freud blade and that's what we recommend is something uh, at least a quality like that. So 
The first thing we're going to do is get the chop saw in place, unplug it, and we're going to install our blade and we're going to proceed with the setup. So the saw is now unplugged. Off camera, I'm going to simply replace the blade with this on this saw and uh, then we'll start with the setup. Okay, as you can see, I've installed the 80 tooth blade. What I'm going to do now is I am going to plug the saw in and I'm going to cut my backer board and I'm going to cut a four inch piece off of this and after I get finished cutting this I'll show you what it's going to be used for. Now that little piece that I cut off it's actually going to be used as a marking gauge on this board when we put when we clamp this the backer board when we clamp the backer board to the miter saw this board will be moved back and forth on that backer on that backer board to make sure that we have the right length on both sides of our frame sides so this little backer board is going to be sliding back and forth, or this little marker board is going to be sliding back and forth on this backer board. But in order to keep it, we want to keep it vertical. So what I've got is I've just got a piece of scrap wood here, and I'm just going to tack it onto the top of this so that it will keep this from twisting like that. And to speed things up, I'm just going to use, for right now, normally I would glue this uh, and maybe screw it, but for right now I'm just going to tack this with a stapler. So that you can all see how this is going to work. Now that will sit on there like that, and this will have the ability to move back and forth. Now the next thing we're going to do is unplug the saw we're going to set up the backer board against the fence, we're going to clamp it and then we're going to set the angle of the saw. Okay with our saw unplugged now we're going to clamp the backer board to the saw and this is where we talked about the height. I have quite a bit of height here in my saw but frames are not going to be all that thick so you have to come to a happy medium with your clamps because your clamps are going to need to fit over top and close enough to be able to clamp down that backer board to your existing fence. Now the next thing we're going to do is move the saw into the 45 degree angle. Now that's a 45 degree angle with my saw, but that doesn't mean that the saw is accurate. And this is where you need to have a very fine measuring device to make sure that the saw is actually set at 45 degrees and that is also why the saw needs to be turned off right now. Now what I like to use to double check to make sure the saw is at 45 degrees or to set it at 45 degrees is not one of these carpenters squares. I've found some of them are accurate and some of them aren't. Instead what you'll probably want to do is to go to an office supply store and purchase one of these. These are draftsmen, these are accurate 45 degree, this one's clear so it's a little hard to see, um, these are accurate 45 degree squares um, or triangles and they are what you need to be able to check your saw to make sure that it's at 45 degrees. Okay still with the saw unplugged what I'm doing now is pushing the blade down in place and I'm checking it with the square and again it might be hard for you to see because it's clear and 
in my case it looks like it's just about perfect. Now if it's not perfect typically what you'll have to do is make some adjustments and, and set your saw manually so that it is actually at 45 degrees and the only way you can check that is with this but we're going to make a test cut right now and double check to make sure that it's at 45 degrees because that part is critical. Okay now before I make this test cut your angle because it's square uh, and you've probably already clamped the, the the backer board in I'm actually going to move mine I'm just going to slide mine back a little bit and I'm going to cut because it hasn't been it hasn't made an initial cut here I'm going to make that initial cut first of all so I'm just going to plug the saw in now and we'll make that initial cut then we'll cut our test board Okay, now I'm going to make my test cut and I have a nice flat board here and I'm just going to set it in like that and we'll go ahead and make that cut. Okay, now we want to check that. Now you can use whatever you want to check that angle to make sure that's right on. You can use your original uh, draftsman uh, um, triangle and you might need to put a board on either side of that just to, on either side of that board and see how that uh, slides into it. I'm going to use my digital protractor. I, I absolutely love this tool. It is so accurate and so versatile uh, and I'm just going to check that and see what it says. And there it is, right there. Mine says 45 point, 45 point one degrees, uh, and I don't think you can get any more accurate than that. One of the things you might want to check when you're clamping your backer board on there is that you don't have any dust between your backer board and the fence on your sliding miter, because that can also affect how the backer board is sitting flush against that. Little bits of dust can make a, quite a bit of a difference. Okay, now we're going to set up to make our picture frames. Now the first thing you need to do when making picture frames with a sliding miter is you need to take your frame material, and here's my four blank uh, boards, and you need to make an initial 45 degree cut on every one of these. So that's what I'm going to do now, is make that initial cut. Okay, now that I've made my initial cuts on all of my frame material, the next thing I need to do is to use my marker and set my marker somewhere along the backer board. And I'm going to need to clamp that down. But the question about where to set it, that's going to depend on how long the frames are that you're making or what dimensions are. And what I do, I actually make, because a lot of my frames are repetitious, I actually make a, a marker stick. And that marker stick 
fits right to that angle and I take this and butt it up to that board and then I just clamp that down and now that means that those two frames are going to be, or those, that side of those two frames are going to be exactly the same length. Just clamp that down. And that's perfect. Now I'm going to cut my first two sides. And this end now butts up against that stopper and we make our first cut. Second side butts up against the stopper nice and tight. There's two sides of our frame and those are absolutely identical in length. Now that we've made the two long sides, we need to reset up and make the short sides of the frame. So we need to loosen that clamp, slide this along, and there's my marker board and it sits right in there like that and that marker board needs to slide along right to there and clamp that double check that and make the second cuts on the other two sides but this up against the stopper There's the two short sides. And they are also absolutely the same length. What I have set up on my workbench, uh, it's a little hard to see because it's wood on wood, but I have these rails on the back and the side. And I put this square in here so that you can see it a bit better. And these rails are set absolutely at 90 degrees. And I use them for putting together different 90 degree boxes and angles. Uh, and in this case, we're going to use it for putting our frame together because we're actually going to pin this frame together that we just made. And there's our pieces. There's the two short pieces and there's the two long pieces and we can just simply put those in place put a dirt in there and put those together just like that there we go those are uh, those are very good joints those are excellent joints and uh, we're just going to I'm just going to get the uh, pinner now and we'll pin those together There you see, 
our picture frame and you can see those joints are very very tight. What would need to happen now is I would typically have glued these and pinned them uh, or used some splines in there depending on whether there was going to be glass. Uh, now it would need to be sanded down and, and finished. But that's how easy it is to make frames on the sliding miter. So, making picture frames on the sliding miter is really pretty simple. You need to make sure your equipment is set up properly and that you understand that the parallel sides of a picture frame need to be of equal length and you too can make perfect professional corners. It's that simple. If you have a digital protractor, that will help you in setting up your tools. The only thing that you really need is a fairly inexpensive triangle available at most office supply stores. We encourage everybody to make comments on our channel. We encourage you to like us, but we also ask you to go and visit our woodworkweb.com website because there will be an article written along with this video so that you can actually see some of the detail that you might not have got by watching the YouTube uh, video. We ask you to subscribe to our channel so that you too can watch all sorts of videos that we have coming up in the future and ones that we've already posted. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.